I'm Joshua Hamlin here in Alamogordo, New Mexico, and behind me is the New Mexico Museum of Space History. And the reason we are out here in the New Mexico desert is because following World War II, this area of the country is what was chosen for the missile testing range. So starting with the V-2 rockets that the Germans had designed, and then when America took over and brought those German engineers over to the U.S., they started working on those missiles, and this area in New Mexico was chosen for the missile range system. So about 30 minutes from here, the White Sands Missile Range, Joshua has the White Sands National Monument, that whole area was chosen as a missile range testing site for the V-2 rockets, which the V-2 rockets then led to NASA and all of the other uh, rocket programs that eventually put us on the moon and got us to where we are today. So this is really the beginning of all that, which is why it's very appropriate that we have the, the Space History Center here in New Mexico near where that program started. The museum is really fascinating. When you first approach, you see outside all of the, the wonderful examples of rockets around me here. So there's actually the, the rusted engine of a, a V-2 rocket over there. You've got lots of different examples of test rockets and things that were used in the early days of kind of space exploration and figuring all this out and how we were going to, to put a man into space and also all of the military uses that applied there as well. Then inside the museum, there's four different floors of really interesting artifacts. There are games and interactive things that you can do to try to land a spacecraft and all sorts of fun stuff like that. There's an excellent exhibit on Star Trek and how that uh, affected and influenced uh, space programs over the years. So that was really interesting. So the, the museum is really fascinating. I believe it was $7 each for adults, so not too expensive and well worth the visit if you're here in this part of New Mexico near the, the White Sands National Monument, traveling around this part of the country. It's a really interesting uh, piece of history out here. 300, 175. Here's coming. 200, 170. 100, 160. Okay, everybody, raise yourself. Gear down and lock. 20. Okay, well, you've flown where no man has flown before. So we're going to call it a wrap and suggest you try again. Well, I hope you've enjoyed learning to land the space shuttle. Thanks for joining me. Please get up and give someone else a chance to fly. Here's a closer look at the rusted out engine of the V-2 German rocket that I mentioned earlier. These types of rockets were designed by German engineers like Werner von Braun during World War II and were used against targets like London and Antwerp towards the end of World War II. Once the war ended, many of those German engineers were brought over to the U.S. and started working on the, the missile program here at the U, uh, in, in the United States. Fun fact about this, at about $3 billion in 1944 dollars, the V-2 missile program cost almost a billion dollars more than the Manhattan Project that designed the atomic bomb here in the U.S. So it was a very expensive program as the Germans were trying to come up with the first kind of missiles here and rockets uh, that they could use during the war. Now I'm standing next to the final resting place of Ham, the world's first astrochimp. As you can see here, he was sent into space on January 3rd, 1961, and launched from Cape Canaveral, Florida. He reached a top speed of 5,800 miles per hour. And then he was recovered successfully 420 miles downrange from the launch site. So this is a really cool piece of history here, and it's very cool that they were able to get his final resting place here at the museum. On December 10th, 1954, Dr. John Stapp rode this rocket sled into history by accelerating to 632 miles per hour in five seconds. During that time, he experienced 46.2 Gs during his 1.4 second stop. Things like this, known as the sonic wind number one, these rocket sleds, were used to measure human response to sudden deceleration, so find out how that affected the human body. This one here was used at the Holloman Air Force Base, which isn't too far from the museum where we are now. And a little fun fact with this, a lot of this uh, sort of groundbreaking work that uh, Dr. Staff did actually had a big impact on the automobile industry and laws regarding seat belts and seat belt safety because they saw how impacts uh, affected the human body and realized how important seat belts were to keeping people safe in car wrecks. So you see how this research into rockets and uh, space travel and all of this other stuff kind of ties together and works its way out into other areas. and helps improve many different areas of life.